Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global eco.co.uk. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go. Good evening. We're on game day, just a couple of hours away from, well, four great games here in Scotland. Aberdeen against Kilmarnock. Here in Glasgow, the defending champion Celtic against Hebs. And the challengers, Rangers, in the capital to tackle Hearts. And the St. Johnson against St. Mirren. And what about last night's result? The Steelmen losing 3-0 against Ross County. So Motherwell for Stuart Kettlewell, 12 games without a win. What's going to happen tonight? Will Celtic increase the lead at the top? Will Rangers narrow the gap? What do you think is going to happen? Give us a call. If you're heading to the East End for the match, there'll be, what, maybe 55,000 there tonight. It's a strange time, Barry, though, isn't it, to have a, a midweek card just ahead of Christmas. But nevertheless, looking forward to it tonight. Huge night for Celtic and Rangers. Yeah, the, looking at the card, Paul, there's, there's some tasty um, games, no doubt about it. Um, Hibernian off a good result at the weekend against Aberdeen, coming to Celtic Park. The way Nick Montgomery plays his, his football is um, wide open, attractive um, attacking football. So I'm sure he'll come and, and try and get the three points. And obviously Rangers um, going to Tynecastle, Steve, Stephen Naismith, manager of the month. That's three wins on the bounce. They've got a bit of confidence. So looking forward to the games tonight. Angriest manager in his career at the weekend, Brendan Rogers. will be looking for a bounce tonight. He got the win at the weekend. And Mark, for Rangers, Philippe Clement, what's that, 11 games? No defeats, mm. eight wins, three draws. So he's looking to continue. It's a huge game tonight in Tynecastle. Yeah, I mean, uh, this may well be his toughest game um, domestically, um, Paul, game at... Uh, Petodje was a tough one a couple of weeks ago, but but tonight Hearts in a bit of form. Stephen A. Smith, you know, they'll be feeling good. The home crowd under the lights midweek. Um, so yeah, but a real test for Rangers. I said Monday night, if Rangers are not bang on it, Paul, um, then you know they won't get the three points. They'll need to be absolutely spot on tonight. What do you make of the headline? We talked about it last week. Mayowski, Aberdeen, Bojan Mayowski. Could he be on his way to Celtic in January? Mark, there's uh, speculation about it today that he could be a transfer on the way to Glasgow. Could you see this happen? We talked about it last week. You, he's a good player. Yeah, he is a good player. Um, and I think uh, the the way he took his goal against Rangers at Petaudry 10 days ago, you know, probably just put him up a notch. He is a, a, an international footballer uh, for North Macedonia. Um, and he's been consistent, Paul. He's not a flash in the pan, so he's got a bit about him. Um I think uh, behind the scenes Aberdeen uh, I say it'll be a minimum £4 million to get him I don't think they'll get that um, you know if the player's aware there's things going on then you know it, it could move um, pretty quickly is he a target for Celtic? I've no idea should he be given Celtic circumstances? yeah why not? you know when, he, when he's under your nose when he's on the radar he knows the country he knows the league um, Celtic are going to lose strikers next month um, for the Asian Cup etc then yeah, Miofsky should be under consideration. Barry, what do you think of Miofsky? He's definitely a player that's grew on me, Paul. I, I wasn't too sure at the start, if I'm being honest, um, but watched him on a number of occasions over the last few months and um, one thing about him is he's a goal scorer. He knows where the back of the net is. Um, so I can see why clubs will be interested in him um, because simple fact is he scored goals for Aberdeen and um, managers want goal scorers. So I would imagine it's not just Celtic, I'd imagine there'll be other clubs sniffing about them. And, um, but if they're talking around about the £4 million, part, uh, £4 million pound mark, I'm not too sure if, he, if he's worth that. But listen, he, he's certainly a, a good player and he's certainly impressed for Aberdeen. Could Rangers be interested as well in Majofsky? Yeah, I'm sure that's an area they'll be, they'll be looking at strengthening as well. Um, a lot of managers want three or four centre-forwards, Paul. Um, so I'm, I'm sure... He, he could be on the radar um, of Rangers, but I'm sure there'll be another few players um, on that list that, that Rangers are hopefully trying to sign in, in January. Celtic fans, what are you thinking? And what's your team for tonight? I'll ask both of you, because he made changes at the weekend. It had an impact. 
how will Celtic line up against Hibs? 0808 17 17 700, Mark Weedy, Paul Cooney and Barry Ferguson. And Barry, what about Rangers? Seema then, who two goals at the weekend on loan, as we know, from Brighton and the manager would like to, well, looks as though, convert it into an actual purchase. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, yeah, he's he's another player similar to Mioski. He's grew on me. I wasn't too sure at the at the start, but listen, he, he's getting to grips with um, what it, how it took to to play with Rangers. He, he's come up and obviously took a few games. Then he started scoring a few goals. I like I like him. Um, he, he's a good finisher. Pace to burn, which defenders hate playing against. But I I, I think he's better with the game in front of him when he comes in and when he's trying to link up that's not his strength but in behind is his strength and, and certainly when Rangers play to that strength um, Seema does very well and I thought his two finishes at the weekend um, against St Murn were excellent You can see he's got confidence just now Yeah yeah, he, 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 he hit a really good patch took a wee dip in terms of not scoring goals and then he's come back again you know and, and as Barry said He's a man um, in form. He'll be feeling great going into tonight's game. I don't think there's any doubt that, that he'll um, start. And when he uses that pace, um, you know, I think he's got to learn a bit more and, and contribute a bit more, linking the game, etc. But when he can get that ball and run at defenders or something behind, he's got it all day long. And then as he showed on uh, Saturday when, when Cantwell put him, Sunday rather, put him through for that second goal in the middle of the goal, just kept his composure, picked his spot and rolled it into the net. Rangers fans, what are you thinking? Give us a call ahead of the game tonight with Hearts. 08, 08 17, 17, 700. And Motherwell fans, Barry, that result last night, I don't think anyone expected a 3-0 defeat. They were a goal down in two minutes. No, I, I said on Monday, I, I thought Mother would have been up to um, Dingwall and, and come back down the road with a point, but that, that was a sore defeat for Motherwell. Um, you mentioned that it started to show Paul, 12, or Mark did 12 games without a win. It's a, it's a long time I know there's been a couple of draws within that but they, they need to start getting points on the board they had a fantastic start to the season um, but listen it's all about winning games of football and, and certainly winning games when you're coming up against teams that are going to be round about you so that's a sore one for Stuart Kettlewell and they've got a massive one at the weekend at third part against St Johnson the manager was saying afterwards, Mark, as you know, he said that was the toughest ever night as a manager. And of course he was at Ross County, lost yeah. his job eventually after doing a great job for a few years. Sure. The toughest night ever. Everyone praised him, quite rightly, great end uh, to the season when he took over last year, good yeah. start and it's gone wrong. What do you do in a case like this? Uh, you've got to just keep going, Paul. Keep doing what you believe in. He might have changed it up a wee bit. He's got experience number two beside him, Stevie Frail. They'll be leaving no stone um, unturned. Um, and I'm not saying it's a be all and end all but it just shows you when you lose goals like Van Veen was giving them eventually at some point that will take its toll uh, and it certainly has 12 games Paul you don't like to say it but if you lose at home Motherwell lose at home to St Johnston in front of their own supporters on Saturday um, Stuart Kettlewell is really going to feel it'll be doing well to survive that kind of scenario and he'll know that himself he's an experienced manager um, but I, w I wouldn't bet against him getting Motherwell out of it but they'll need to win on Saturday I don't know if he could survive another defeat Barry you know him you know what he's done before resilience is so important isn't it when things go against you strange isn't it you, you can't buy a win at the moment maybe this weekend it'll be a turning point yeah you, you would think that um, obviously coming up against his, his former club as well I mean he, he'd be travelling down in that bus in a in a bad way um, and listen I, I think it's a must win for Mill in, in Saturday against St Johnson because um, he, he did get the praise Paul you mentioned yeah. that he did when he came into the job um, he stabilised them they were playing good stuff start of the season um, they were playing um, good stuff again but they've listen they're, they're in a major rut and they need to get out of it and it's one of the games on Saturday who cares how you play yeah you just come out at quarter to five or ten to five whenever ever the game finishes you come out with the three points Celtic midfielder Matt O'Reilly has experienced the biggest increase in market value in the Scottish Premiership up three million to 13 million according to transfer market they're just numbers just now Mark but that wouldn't surprise you would it top player for Celtic this season yeah he's been doing really well and a real quality finish on, on uh, Sunday afternoon um, I, I, I don't know what kind of credibility that valuations got yeah. but I don't think Celtic would sell him for 13 no. million to be honest um, but he's a player heading in the right direction and he's only what 22 23 
Um, so yeah, and and he's really had a nice purple patch under Brendan Rodgers as well. They seem to have clicked as a as a manager um, and a player. Um, but again, for for Matt O'Reilly um, to to get the 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 big move that he thinks that he, or the, the stage, the platform that he thinks he's good enough to go and get to and, and I think he may well in time uh, it would be, you've got to do it in the European stage Paul, you know, to get that real high valuation to get you know, top 10 clubs down the road you know, really chasing your signature you've got to go and do it, Lazio away next week, final at home you've got to go and turn it on with the greatest respect, Motherwell at home St Myrna away, that, that's all good it's nice and it's your bed and butter and it gets you to win uh, titles but it doesn't grab the attention of the really really big boys one and a half million pounds as mm. you know Barry what a sign yeah but yeah. I, I, I agree totally about Mark saying that it's okay saying you can get in between 10 and 15 million for him but you, you have to produce the goods in the big games certainly here and if it's cup finals or if it's against Rangers and I watched the game against Lazio last week and, and he wasn't really involved much so if Celtic are going to get big money and listen I think he's got a fantastic ability but he needs to do it in the, in the big games and if he does it in the big games then Celtic uh, would be in for a hefty hefty profit Mark, Barry we saw it last night Scotland women's going in we knew it was going to be tough against England but we, mm. we were thrashed 6-0 uh, and of course it affects uh, the UK, Britain for the Olympics but more importantly for us how can that happen at home last night? It's a shocker absolute yeah. shocker um, Paul and I follow the, the, the women's football yeah. quite a bit keep an eye on it I want to you know you want to see it thrive you want to see them get better it was a great buzz for the nation mm -hmm. when uh, they were at France at the World Cup finals they, they blew it uh, against Argentina but last night regardless of, of, of how good England are that, that's not acceptable and the manager lost all know that the players will know that they'll, they'll be embarrassed um, about that kind of result and um, how they get out of it how they better I, I don't know but um, you know when, when things go wrong uh, with the men's game you know it comes out there's, there's, there's a real um, in-depth um, you know dive into right where, where can we improve what's going wrong what can we do better and you know it's maybe reached that stage with the women's game at national level as well so let's sit the manager down the senior player down and say okay where where can we get better like the men's team Small things, the training facility, the hotel facility, the cooking, this to that. So the, the 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 players at the highest level for the Scotland national team in the last five six years, Andy Robertson at Liverpool, Scott McTominay, Man United, John McGinn at Aston Villa, they were having the best of everything on a day to day basis, and they asked the SFA to up the ante a bit. So did Steve Clark, and they did. So you now look at the women's game. A lot of the players are down the road. One of the girls at Real Madrid, yeah. um, they'll be getting the best of everything. So they'll be looking for, you know, I'm not saying it's not the best of everything they're getting, but if it's not, if there's wee room for improvement, then go and do it. You know, it needs to be investment as much as they can and go and give them every chance to be successful. Barry? Yeah, I tuned in it. It was a hard watch. I actually, I actually thought the first 15, 20 minutes, they, they did okay. They were pressing them pretty well. But once England got that first goal, it was it was game over. It was, um, it was a sore watch. And the uh, difference in quality between Scotland and England was, was alarming. Um, it was a, a sore, sore defeat, and hopefully they um, they can get back to playing decent stuff and, and getting getting decent results. Um, that's then been relegated now, so maybe they're going into a, a group scenario where they're coming up against teams that are probably at their level. Um, but yeah, it was a sore watch, especially when it's against your fiercest rivals. Course, yeah, that's the that's the worst thing about it. Yeah, and another thing, of course, was in, in the build-up. You know, it's all you know. Scotland won't be, you know, and, and they were, <laughs> yeah. you know, they, they were furious at that. You, know, you could see yeah. Rachel Corsi, some of the oh. girls, absolutely raging. Yeah. Um, you know, any kind of accusation that was doing the rounds, and, and, and no, they didn't lie down. Of course, they gave it their all, but you know, they yeah. didn't do themselves any mm -hmm. favour with the, the scoreline and the performance. I, th I think the thing that killed them last night was the first goal. Mm. The Martin was was, was poor and. Um, inside the box and it was a free header um, and after that that just gives England a bit of confidence and with the quality that they've got um, it was uh, it was going to be a long night for Scotland On the way up hopefully for Scotland I agree with both of you there there has to be a proper look at it as well though Losa has said I'm really sorry about it gutted but you know they get lots of good publicity quite rightly more and more people want to encourage the women's game 
but we want to do Good better. Good crowd as well last yeah, night. It was, yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah the traffic was uh, busy as we came out last night. But I was going to ask you about that. It goes without saying, if you're playing in the dark blue of Scotland, you give everything. So that suggestion that they would lie down somehow yeah. to England. Yeah, sometimes you've just got to hold yeah. your hands up, Paul, and say, say the better team won. Yeah. They, had, they had better quality. But I, I did expect a bit more for Scotland last night. Um, but 6-0, it's, it's a sore one. It's game day, we're looking forward to the games tonight. Here is the Rangers manager, Philippe Clement, talking about the challenge of Hearts. Yeah, big one. Eh? Um, of course, we beat them now in two games. A little bit special, it's my 11th game for the club and the third time against the same opponent. But we had to be two times on our toes to, to, to have a really good level to beat them. It's a good team, good organisation, good attacking players. They are super motivated also, what I hear, what I read. Uh, about this game to, to beat us and uh, yeah it's going to be uh, a big challenge for us Barry what kind of game are you expecting tonight and any surprises in the lineup? no I, I, well I think there'll be one change from the, the weekend one stroke two um, what am I expecting I'm expecting a physical hearts tonight and Rangers need to stand up to that um, it'll be a good challenge they've met them twice before they scored a couple of goals going into the the latter stages of the game, um, they deserve to beat them in the semi-final. There's no doubt about that. It was at that game as well. But tonight will be a different challenge. You're at Tynecastle, pitch is tight, fans are on top of you. Um, but I, I'm expecting Rangers know that they can't go to Tynecastle and come back down the M8 way without, um, or sorry, say dropping points. Sure. They need to mm. come back with the three points. But it's, I think it's going to be blood and thunder tonight. You know what hurts. Yeah. I, mean, I know what hurts. I know what Stephen Nesmith's going to say to his players before they go out at eight o'clock is get in Rangers' faces and, and make it tough and difficult for them. So you've got to expect that. That's what I always expected going to Tynecastle. So it's a case tonight: is roll your sleeves up, make sure you outwork your opponent, and if Rangers do that, Rangers have got better quality in Hearts, and that will come through. Mark, one of the changes probably Desert, so go back to the bench. Do you think? Yeah, um, you know, Danny Law, I think, will come in and start the game, Paul, and rightly so. At the moment, he's Rangers number one. A striker, and I know this is a subject that we've touched on many, many times, um, because he keeps breaking down, would be, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the potential of Bajowski for Rangers. You think, well, see if, see if Kimar Roof can get yeah. fit and stay fit. He don't need another striker, because yeah. he's quality. And he's such a good football player. He knows that position inside out. He could even drop. You know, deeper as well. We can go into the wide area. So he's a top player. He's been on the bench. I wonder if he'll get a bit of action tonight. But Danilo um, will start. And for Dessers, Paul, I was wanting Dessers to do well. He had his interview a couple weeks ago. Really liked. It. You can tell he's got a desire to do well. I don't think he's a chancer as and he doesn't care. I think he does care. Um, Lammers does look for me like it's going to work. And I think getting these guys out the door um, is what Rangers need to do to then go and try and circulate some stuff, Paul, and get. Um, you know others in you because well we know we're not speculating we know they've got a heavy heavy wage bill that's unsustainable yeah. so they've got to really go and be imagin imaginative um, in the market uh, next month and the manager's going to have to be ruthless if he's got any doubts about anybody because he's given the, these guys a chance they're just for whatever reason it's not happened for them you've got to try and move these guys on get as much as you can paid elsewhere for their wages to allow you to go and do bits and bobs elsewhere recruitment departments are going to be really busy not least at Ibrox and I see the chairman yesterday at the AGM Barry and I know you, you obviously keep a, a keen interest in your old club is saying that the spending under the summer with Michael Beale won't affect yeah. the situation and you've been saying there are going yeah, to be I, signings I thought, that. Yeah. I, I, I thought that would be the case um, I don't think there's going to be as much money as there was in the summer clearly but there will be a bit of money for him to go and, and bring in players if he thinks they're going to be good enough and strengthen his starting 11. Um, but we just need to wait and see. Listen, January, the, the, the issue you've got with January is there's a lot of players become available. And I don't think he's a type of manager that will go and sign a player just for the sake of it. I think he knows what he wants to strengthen. And if that player becomes available, I'm sure the board will, will try and back him as much as possible. You think it could be Majofsky at Celtic in January and Shankland at Rangers? Well, again, I, I think we speak about it quite a lot on here. But we're quick to go and look at other countries and, and see that there is good players there, there's no doubt. But I think there's good players in our game that could do a, a job, certainly domestically. So I've always said it. I think Shankland 
could easily do a job domestic for, uh, domestically for Rangers. No Mark, doubt in my mind about that. That's a lot of good talent in our mm-hmm. Premiership, Paul, whether they're Scottish or, or they're foreign lads like Leighton Miofsky. There is a lot of good talent and, and we've seen a lot of good talent leave whether it's to go down the road or go, to, go abroad. Serie A has been a, uh, a real hunting ground for, for the Italian teams to come over here now. <laughs> Barry's nephew, yeah. Lewis, uh, Josh Stoig, Aaron Hickey, etc, etc. So, um, we have got talented players and sometimes I just think recruitment departments um, I don't know if they think it's overlooked they think I think it's overlooked it, I'll be honest snobbery, yeah. whatever yeah. but just you know don't be afraid to because maybe it's like oh you know Mike like we missed him as a kid as a 15 year old we should have had no listen just go and get them right. and if you need to pay money for them you need to pay money Mark it's been proven in the past that you can go to other clubs within the league and get players that will come and do a very very good job for you I had it myself when I was at Rangers, but I've rhymed off five or six yeah. centre forwards that came and, and done brilliant jobs for Rangers. Celtic are the same. Yeah. They've went to Hibs in the past. And, and the United, they signed about five or six yeah. players within the so, United. Yeah. 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 So clearly, the, um, I believe there is players in the league that now who could certainly do a job for, for both Rangers and Celtic. Are, are they going to take them to the dizzy heights of Europe and, and do it in Europe? I don't know, but domestically, that's, that's your bread and butter first and foremost. That's where you, you win the trophies to get into Europe. That's where you win <laughs> trophies to get the silverware back to your, your stadium. So, yeah, the two centre-forwards that you mentioned, I do think, after watching them this season, they could certainly do a job at both Rangers and Celtic. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Tailored and renewable energy products to suit your commercial and domestic needs. Let's go! You can always tell with the traffic and travel when we're chatting here in the studio, especially when it's Barry Ferguson and Mark Guidi. Looking forward to the games tonight and getting your predictions. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like that line, Paul. I what like was that? that one. Five minutes delay gives you an extra five minutes to listen to the show. <laughs> I like that Only line, on Paul. this channel. <laughs> <laughs> I like when it's a news break. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I do. I get you. Some of your stories. They're brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> What would you want Jeff Stelling <laughs> <laughs> that Jeff. takes us to the colour that's it exactly <laughs> listen we're really looking forward to the matches tonight some of the calls coming in 08 08 17 17 700 and we haven't even mentioned Aberdeen against Kelly and we will later in the programme and St Johnson against St Mirren St Johnson reviving and St Mirren fourth top of the table huge game for them tonight though isn't it a great chance for Saints of Paisley yeah um, as we're looking to uh, to try and get back to winning ways uh, Paul just hit that uh, a wee dip well, they, they had the, the win against uh, Livingston but um, yeah Stephen Robinson will be looking to go there and, and get the three points but for St Johnston they can certainly take a lot out of the first hour um, on, on Sunday afternoon things have certainly improved under, under Craig Levine but again for them to go and really show some intent and to pull clear St Johnston should be, should be looking to win that game tonight as well if you want to contact us as well, you know the number. Here's uh, some messages coming in. Here is Gregory, a big Celtic fan. Kyogo will score a double tonight, he thinks, as is the enigma Mikey Johnson. He thinks he'll score as well. Is Mikey Johnson going to start? Uh, uh, yeah. I think he will, given he's, yep. the way he finished the game and his contribution in the second half. Yeah, I think he deserves a start. And funny enough, for Kyogo, Paul, um, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but only one goal in the last seven and eight games. So, yeah, I think, it, well, no doubt, and obviously his ability and the contribution that he makes but for him that's that's uh, that's probably his poorest run of form since he came into the club in terms of goal scoring so I'm sure this is the kind of game tonight that he'll be marking to get back on the sheet Yeah he's just going one, uh, through one of the stages that forwards get through Paul um, I'm sure if he gets gets a goal tonight I think he'll, he'll kick on again there's no doubt in his ability um, he still works really hard even if he's, if he's no scoring he still yeah. brings something to the Celtic team and I think if you ask every defender in the Premier League in, in Scotland, that they, they'll hate playing against him because he's constantly on the go. But he's going through a tough time now, but listen, that, that ends um, as soon as he, he hits the back of the net. You also need competition as well. I mean, he gives everything, doesn't he? But, you know, Majofsky, if he comes in in January, and Mark, you reckon if that happens, it would maybe be two and a half million, not the four and a half million. You can't blame Aberdeen for going for as much as they want. What's your Celtic team for tonight? Well, i tell you what Gregory's thinking. Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, Hart and goals. Don't think there's any question. Then the back four. Alistair Johnson, Liam Scales, Cameron Carter-Vickers and Greg Taylor. I'm just looking at Barry as well. Is that a nod for the back yep. four? We agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's gone with O'Reilly, McGregor and Turnbull. 
But this time we're going to start. And up front, he's got Mikey Johnson, Kyogo and Palma. Uh, the manager was asked, this was 48 hours ago, what's the story about Palma after the weekend? Yeah, it looked like it was his hamstring, but it wasn't. He just had a bit of cramp that set in. So, uh, so thankfully, he's, he's OK. And he was asked about Kyogo and O. They were on the park together. Is that going to happen again? Can do, yeah. yeah. I think that's how the game evolved. I think it's, it's uh, in respect of how the game, the game sits. I think we... Uh, we normally play with a, a single striker and two wide strikers. So, uh, but like you say, he's come into the game and uh, and done very well and just given us a different uh, dimension in the game. So, uh, so I've been really pleased with the contribution always made. And yeah, I'm not averse to to playing the two together if, uh, if that's what the game needs. And, and that remains to be seen if he'll do that tonight, Paul. Um... He might be tempted to put Callum McGregor up one in a more advanced yeah. role that he taught, so that might leave. Uh, maybe someone like a water um, coming in and, and, and filling in. So I think that's certainly an option. I think when we look at Hibs, and I said it from day one, watching them away to Kilmarnock, Nick Montgomery's first game, and then watching sports the other night, the amount of risks that they take at, at the back, you know, if you, and I hate using that phrase, you know, high press, I hate it. But anyway, if you really get at them, low block, yeah. low block, <laughs> if you get at them, yeah. They will give you opportunity in transition. So <laughs> in transition, in the incision zone, if you can get in there, then you will get chances to score. They will give you chances to score because that's the way Nick Montgomery um, plays. Likewise, they're a threat though. If they get out and they get into the opposition half, they've got blistering uh, pace as well. Obviously, we boil. But um, I think there'll be a lot of goals at Celtic Park tonight uh, too. And uh, I'm going to go for McGregor get up one in a water coming into the team right. between in the lines yeah indeed Yeah, <laughs> just get in the box that's the main thing and, and score the goals that's what that's they, they need to do yep. so Turnbull is uh, I don't think it'll start no, for no, me no. no it sounds to me just watching it over the years you think he might be on his way out in January mm. Yeah, I think so well if they can get a buyer yeah. it might, it might sure. suit the player to, to go on a free if for nothing it might suit Celtic to, to have him and get the last four months you know if it's a a tight title race, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Tumbles, no doubt. Paul, he can score goals. He's, yep. I mean, he's, he's not chucked it. He's no. still a hungry player. Yeah, he'll be goals. total. Yeah. He'll be a total uh, professional. But it looks to me, uh, unless something extraordinary happens, that he'll be away. And my guess would be he'll go for nothing at the end of the season. He'll go and sign wow. somewhere else. And that would be bad news for Motherwell as well, who'd have had a, a sell on. Barry, we always want a Scottish player, international player, mm. to do well. Uh, and it looks, do you get the feeling that he might be on his way? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And, and I think he needs to seriously consider um, what he's wanting to do in terms of does he want to be a bit part player does he want to play a couple of games a month or does he want to play week in week out and I think he would get a better opportunity doing that if he, he moves elsewhere and plus I think he's good enough to be in the Scotland squad and to be in the Scotland squad you need to be playing on a regular basis and that's something that David Turnbull hasn't done um, for a while but I like him um, again he's what I like about him is you'll see if he gives a, a couple of balls away or he has a couple of wild shots at goal, it doesn't phase him. He'll go and have a go again and that's that's what I like about him. But he's a player with really good ability um, and he must, in the back of his mind, be wanting to get back into that Scotland squad. The game's tonight, 7.45, apart from the Rangers game, which is on Sky at 8 o'clock. Sean, you'll be watching it, I think, a big Rangers fan. Good evening. All right, guys. Well, I'm hoping it's a good game um, like last night, like um, the Luton and Arsenal games. Oof. I hope there's goals. Yeah. Uh, but I just want Rangers to try and keep a clean sheet. But I think Hearts will get a goal tonight. And I think it will be 3 1. But I just want to see a good game of football tonight. I know it's a cold night. So keep everybody warm and hopefully get a couple of goals tonight. Barry, what do you reckon? Sean's often on the money, 3 1 Rangers, he thinks. I take that yeah. in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> See, I Liam take a win. I just, uh, yeah. listen, I, I think it will be um, a feisty encounter tonight. Um, I don't know if there'll be a lot of great football played in it because I think Hearts will have a certain way of approaching the game. I think it'll be up to Rangers to, to handle that. And if they handle the physical side of it, Rangers have got better players. Mark, what do you reckon tonight with this one? I, th I think there'll, there'll be goals. Uh, I think we tight. I think we said three two Rangers mm -hmm. um, on Monday night. I'll stick um, uh, by that. But I think I, I get what Sean's saying. It's cold. It could be minus one, minus two again. But, but I don't mind if, it, if it's dry, Paul. You know, it's good. You know, it's no one day. I think it's a great and and, and you know the, the the punters will be shouting to keep themselves warm. Um, you know, they'll be keeping active. So yeah. I think it's got the makings of a right mm -hmm. good ninety minutes. You know, watched it on television tonight. I think it could be a cracker. I think it's going to be on the game blood and thunder I think mm. there's going to be tackles yep. in it 
Um, and again, Paul, I know I keep repeating myself, but what a place to go and play yeah. during the week mm. under the lights. You can't beat it. Who are the winners for Rangers tonight then who'll go in, compete, battle? Well, th- everybody these. needs to yeah. be at it, Paul. Mm. It's not just about one or two players. Every single player that the manager picks tonight, and I mean, I've wrote my team down, I think there'll only be one change. Okay. And that'll be Danilo one for Dessers. That's the only change I would make for tonight's game. Yeah, you wouldn't be surprised, would you? What are you thinking up front? Would you like to see Lauren Shankland come January in a Rangers top? Uh, I've shouted it for, um, I think, since uh, the last time we was on the show. I yep. take Shankland to Rangers in a heartbeat. Um, he's a great player. and I, I would I take him, he's Scottish and all, because let's be honest, I don't think there's many Scottish players in the Rangers team. So, mm-hmm. and I, I, would, I would go for it. Any thoughts about Majofsky on his way to Celtic? Potentially, that's a report today. Uh, would that worry you? Sean, are you not bothered? Um, no? I'm not bored. Let them sign who they want. As long as Rangers uh, win their games, that's all I'm interested in, to be honest, Paul. Mate. And as long as they don't sign Jude Bellingham, you'll be all right. <laughs> See, when you mentioned the weather, I thought we'd Sean Batty rather than Sean and Gothamluk here. We're talking about the weather tonight. Uh, Danilo, he also, I mean, everyone says about Danilo, but he also needs to perform and be unconscious. Yeah, because he was a big money signing. Yeah. Um, there's no doubt, Paul, he, he brings more to the team when he plays directly through the middle. Uh, and you can see the difference in him. Um, but listen, I, I want to see more. I, I think there's a player in there. I'm, I'm being greedy. I, I want more from him. Um, but certainly his, his movement is good. He's a hard worker. Um, he's a real team player. And that's the reason why I, I, I think he, he get rested at the weekend because he'll start tonight. Here's what the manager said last night, a squad update. No big difference, I hope, for the weekend. Of course, it's afternoon training because we have the AGM today. Uh, so I will hear more when the players come in. It's just two days after the game. Uh, but yesterday it seemed okay. Nothing really, really special. A few knocks, a few bumps. Uh, I hope uh, no big things this afternoon. He's been talking about learning more about his team in the first six, seven weeks. But I'm learning to get to know my players better and better. And that's really important. Uh, and in that way, Tot was also a really good example this week. We had really good talks this week and I, I get to know the player again better, like other players. So that's important now. That's going to be also a, a very important thing when we go in training camp in January, uh, where I always take the time to do individual talks with all the players. So it's going to be hard work there in training and in the evenings. It's going to be a lot of talks with the staff together, with the players individual, uh, to really get to know them. So we're still in, yeah, now six weeks, I think, here. A lot of things happened already with all the games, all the trainings, all the talks, getting people in, like uh, director of performance, uh, director of recruitment, all these things was also, uh, aside all the things that happened around the games, so it's been a busy period, but I get to know the club and the players better and better. Barry, the visit to La Manga is going to be quite intense. It's quite a way away, isn't it? There's so much to happen between now and then. Yeah, I think that's the last thing on his mind at this yeah. moment in time. It's the amount of games Rangers have in, in December and it's about taking maximum points plus you've got the added bonus at the cup final on the 17th. Um, but it's a good point to make. So I think they'll get a rest, spend a bit of time with their family once the winter break comes and then they'll go out to La Manga. Um, no fragile for hard work. Is it hard work? You, you get a few yeah. days off beforehand, don't they, with yeah, the families? Yeah, you get yeah. a, a bit of time because I think it's important because um, you're playing three games a week, Paul. You're you're constantly in training seven days a week. You you don't see the the family as much as you would like. So I'm sure it'll give them uh, give the players the opportunity to spend a bit of time with their with their families, and then um, they'll come back refreshed, fly out to La Manga, and get the hard work done for coming back for the first game against Dumbarton. I think it is in the cup. Mm-hmm. Are you surprised that Celtic at the moment, Brendan Rodgers says they're opting to stay at home in January, give players time with their families during the winter break? Rangers, of course, heading to La Manga. Mark, would you? He's kind of left it open that they could change that plan. Yeah, they'll the, the wait and see. He'll see where they are as well, what results are like, um, Paul, because a, a lot can happen between now and January the 2nd. And, and if he feels like at full time in January say, actually what well, we'll benefit from nicking away for uh, nicking away for five or six days they'll do it they'll go and get something done wait till they, they play January 2nd 
they'll give the players a week off to the 9th or the 10th of the report back they'll go somewhere 5, 6, 7 days and then they're back for the cup on the 20th of January that's the kind of format uh, that happens they do tend to like to go away just to get a change of scenario I think it's probably even more important for Philippe Clermont uh, just what you see just getting to know his players better uh, having a wee heart to heart so he's clearly learned a lot from that conversation that he's had with Taunt Cantwell well, maybe get, both of them get a few things off their chest with a clearer understanding what each other's looking for certainly what's more important is that Todd, Todd Cantwell understands that what he needs to do to be part of Philippe Clermont's plans moving forward and he needs to buy into it um, and if he can have get another couple of players to buy into it by way and then you know, that saves him a bit of work in the transfer window, saves him a bit of upheaval. He can turn things around for a couple of players that might just be borderline um, at the moment. So, yeah, I think more beneficial for Rangers to do it and sell to it. I, I think they probably might end up just nicking away. Some reckon, ball, yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. check with Sean on the weather. No, Sean, <laughs> before you go, you happy so far? Your manager, six weeks in? Yeah, I'm just looking forward to the January. I know it's got to be hard because January the transfer window isn't really the best transfer window to bring people in because you can pay over the odds for players but only it's yeah. good enough and it's, if players are playing well for their club it's hard to get them so it's mostly loan so I'm looking forward to it hopefully we get one or two in I would like to bring Hadji back if there's an option and mm. uh, we'll just see where it goes for there but yeah I'm going to enjoy okay. the games and there's a good few games on the night you've got Aston sure. Villa City you've got Chelsea yeah. Man U so it's a good night for a football team Thanks, Sean, for your call. Barry, that's something we'll ask you about shortly. Could uh, Yanis Hadji be back at Ibrox in January? The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. For your free energy home survey and a bespoke quote, call 0800 233 5788. Let's go. It's the Go Radio Football Show, Wednesday evening edition. Paul Cooney, Barry Ferguson and Mark Guidi. Tomorrow night it's going to be Peter Grant and Stephen McGinn his brother John's got a huge game tonight hasn't he and it's Unai Emery Barry up against Pep Guardiola and uh, the two Spaniards up against each other yeah and he's, he's not got a great record against no. Pep Guardiola um, but I, I tell you one thing Paul what a difference he's made since he's come in to manage Aston Villa um, watched him a couple of times on the box and um, some very good players and they play some very good stuff and, and listen he's a, he's a top class manager he's managed at the, at the highest level so that'll be a tough one for Man City tonight. A few people have been on saying, what about Mikel Arteta? Top of the table, Barry, and they got that win, late, late win last night. Yeah, Declan Rice. Yeah. Yep. Was it 97th minute. Yeah, and they're the, they're the type of wins that, that can land you trophies, Paul. Um, when you're going into the, the dying seconds of a game and um, a great cross in and a, a great finish. He, he's been a real good signing, Declan Rice. He's a a real driving force for the, the, the middle of the, the, the pitch. And a lot of people were questioning is he worth that kind of money? But I tell you what, he's he's shown he's worth it because he's he's playing some of the best football I've seen him play. But what about the goalkeeping position? Has he created a problem for himself? I I, I believe so. Um, but I th- I thought Ramsdale. I mean, watching Arsenal, Ramsdale for me um, didn't put really a, a foot wrong. If I'm being honest, I didn't see the need to to change. But listen. Mikel's got his, his own ideas and, and what he's wanting for a, for a goalkeeper but I, I think Ramsdale can feel a bit hurt for what's, what's happened because I don't think he'd done much wrong and um, I, I thought he was coming on to a real good game he, he was pushing um, do you call him at Everton? Pickford Pickford yeah. is the number one at England and now obviously it's Pickford's place because Ramsdale's obviously out the picture yeah, and, and listen and I don't see him um, playing unless it's in the, the, the cup maybe yeah, yeah. that he might get a game so if he's wanting to go and, and challenge for that number one spot in the England national team I believe he, he needs to try and get a move in January It's a tough position isn't it because as Barry mentioned what was that September Ramsdale's the England goalkeeper against yeah. Scotland at Hamden then David Raya comes in on loan yeah. and then he, he two mistakes last night and now keepers will always make mistakes but has he made a mistake, Mikel, or is he going to manage yeah, this? Yeah, I think, I think he created a, an, unse- an unnecessary situation that's attracted a lot of focus. And uh, I agree with Barry, Ramsdale was doing very well. You know, but there wasn't any question marks to, to, to change him. But there's things going behind the scenes now with goalkeepers, Paul. It's not actually about just your ability to keep the ball at the net. It's you know joining in play. So is, is Raya better, better than Ramsdale with the ball at his feet, like being that 
third central defender if you like perhaps he is but is he better at keeping the ball at the net than Ramsdale no for me it's Ramsdale mm. all day long but there's but bigger picture for England not, not that it concerns yeah. us but um, you know you look at Nick Pope getting that long term injury Ramsdale at the team you know Gary Southgate will be looking you know, hoping that something nothing happens to Jordan sure. Pickford because there, there might be at least one if not two places up for grabs in that England squad yeah. Fraser Foster signed a new deal at Tottenham today another couple of years uh, yeah, at, yeah, at the yeah, ground yeah. so it's good for him he's not playing much but a well, huge contract Paul to, to be honest what, I've, what I'm thinking and, I, and, I, and I'm probably a million miles away at the moment but you get two very good English goalkeepers up here Jack Butland and Joe Hart mm-hmm. I'm not saying they're going to be the number one I'm not saying they're going to be in and take Jordan Pickford's place but what I'm saying is if Ramsdale uh, doesn't get a game and Arsenal don't let him go in January if Nick Pope's out to at least end of March into April then um, where are Fraser Foster's a sub for Spurs where are the other um, where are the other English goalkeepers for like potentially a number three you know for the for the squad so hey, you never know Barry it's uh, a huge topic there your old pal though, Mikel Arteta, he's a good manager though, isn't he? He's now top of the yeah, table. And he's got a good team, yeah. Paul. Yeah. Mm. He has. The, the only one thing I would say, I don't think they've got an out and out goal scorer. Striker. That's the only thing I would say that they're missing, but he's got a good team. You can see the mm. play from them. They, they've got a style of play that's very good to watch. And he's sitting top of the league. And, and that last night showed me that they've got the character. Because um, last year they, they crumbled a wee bit towards the end. Um, but they're looking at a, a different animal this season and I think they may, this might be their best opportunity What about that question back home at Ibrox could you see Yanis Hadji Sean mentioned it 10 minutes ago could he come back from loan? Yeah because he's doing well out. he's doing well sorry out in La Liga um, there's another possibility Alex Lowry who's at Hearts as well so it'll be interesting to see um, what Philip Clement will, will do come January will I recall them or we will let them go and play their, their football and, and keep an eye on them. Um, so that's a that's an interesting sub, uh, subject to see what will happen with the players that are out on loan. Would you bring them back? Is Yanis Hadji, is there anyone no. there better than him? No, I, I like Hadji, but I don't see the need to, to bring them back because I think they're similar players already um, at the club at this moment in time. And Alex Lowry? A lot to happen between now and January. But, I, guess. I said yeah. about Alex, right, Alex Lowry. The, the most important for the young man is to play, but he never played at the weekend. Now he maybe not played at the weekend because obviously Nazi's maybe looking to the game tonight. Um, again, look, I've said what I've said about Lowry. There's no doubt the young man has got huge potential. For me, he just needs to fulfil it, and I think probably the best idea for Lowry is to stay at Hearts for the rest of the season. Mark. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, with Alex Lowry, State of Hearts, he's, he's, he's made an impression there. And I think he'll benefit you know, from other 20, 25 first-team games um, in the second half of the season. Uh, as for Hadji, I mean, I know it's not exactly like for like, but you know, bringing back a Hadji would you know, potentially um, stop the, the growth of, of young McCausland, potentially. So I don't think you need to bring him back. Whatever deal it is that Rangers have agreed, it'll be financially decent for Rangers so I think rather than bringing the likes of Hadji back my efforts would be more looking towards getting others out the door Yeah, whoever that may be we could take your pick out of four or five to, to move on and free up some funds to help the manager in January so I don't think there's any real need to bring Hadji back well, The manager was asked yesterday about outgoings who will be leaving in January? No because first we need to make a good assessment about that it's not good it's not fair it's not honest to do it in six weeks it's really short term that we have to make uh, decisions around that. So until January and even in January, players have the time to, to prove themselves that they are the right man for the club or the right man for the position. So it's, uh, it's, an, it's an open, uh, open battle in that way to, to show themselves. Every game? Yeah, he's saying the right thing there. Yeah. But I think behind the scenes he, he'll know who he believes that can go forward. I know six weeks is a short period. He's bang on there. And there's another, what, three weeks, three and a half weeks to, to the January window opens. But I, I think he will have an idea of who he believes that will go forward with him. 
over at Celtic. Brendan Rodgers getting ready for the game tonight, and it was a conundrum, isn't it? There, those what eight points clear, Rangers a game in hand, um, but it wasn't good in the first half. The angriest he's ever been, and then he made some changes and he gave them a rollicking at half time. And he was asked, so is this going to have an effect for tonight? That's the plan. That's the plan. But um, listen, it, it's it's something that that can happen, and you see it with, even with the very best teams. It happens when you play in so many games. There can be moments where there is a lull, but that's why you're a manager and a coach because you recognise that, and then you need to have the intervention. And um, like I say, we're playing a lot of games. We're playing a lot of games uh, at a high tempo, and that's when we're at our best. So we always have to um, search for that identity. And uh, as I said, we we got it in the second half yesterday, which was outstanding. Mark, they've got to break down defences, though, haven't they? Yeah, um, that's what I think tonight, Paul. If, if Celtic to choose a kind of ideal opponent, it would probably be be Hibs mm-hmm. because they're, they're they're so open. And but that I don't mean they're a bad team. It's just the way the manager likes what we play to be really brave and, and try and penetrate um, and get at the, the opposition, regardless of who you're playing and where you're playing them. So Hibs over the same game plan tonight when they go away from home, and I think it could be a really open, free flowing game of football. I would expect Celtic to create a number of chances and it's just if they've got their shooting boots on tonight Paul if they put them away that's a good phrase the shooting boots I heard yeah. that one for a while here's the manager speaking about this game well it, it was a good football game the last time we, we played and uh, I said after the last game I was complimentary of what Nick's trying to do and uh, and his staff so um, so yeah we'll, we'll expect a good football game And uh, but for us the onus is on ourselves we're at home um, we, uh, we don't want to waste uh, any time in the game like we did yesterday and, and in the first half and like we probably did for about 60 minutes of the game there we, we wasted the valuable time in creating opportunities and, and, and playing the level of football that we want to so uh, so yeah we, we expect to um, to be intense right from the kickoff. Build ups on to kick off in all the games remember Rangers game is at 8 the others at 7.45 the news is next and we will have the team news and more from the managers and from you after this. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. For your free energy home survey and a bespoke quote, call 0800 233 5788. Let's go! Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk. Proper night for football, whatever that means. Barry and Mark, 0808 17 17 700. Busy on the way to the game. Celtic up against Hibs. Battle of the Greens through in Edinburgh. Hearts against Rangers. Aberdeen against Kilmarnock. It's the, the Derek McInnes derby, I think they call it. And St. Johnson against St. Mirren. And last night, a few Motherwell fans on saying, stick with the manager, Stuart Kettlewell, despite the 3-0 defeat last night. They were a goal down in two minutes. Simon Murray scoring. And then Jan Danda made it 2-0. And it was Purrington, Ben Purrington, who scored later in the game. 3-0. Can Motherwell bounce back this weekend against St. Johnson? What are you thinking for tonight's games? Looking forward to them. Can I speak international-wise for a moment or two? Mark, we heard today about the bit of a shambles with the tickets for the Euros and the SFA are going to put them out again tomorrow. Scotland fans will be able to have another go at getting their hands on the briefs for Euro 2024 tomorrow. There was a gaffe today. Briefs were originally on offer this morning, but the SFA admitted an issue which meant they had to then place it on hold. Purchase codes were sent out to Scotland Supporters Club members who weren't actually eligible for the sale. If you can follow this, you get a prize. Hamden Chiefs quickly held their hands up. So, it's a mistake here today. A few people are asking about it. Shouldn't have happened, yeah. but these things do happen. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's a 24-hour delay. Yeah. Um, the most important thing is that they've, they've found out that there's been an error, Paul, they've identified that and, and they've nipped it in the bud rather than it really descending into full-blown chaos. Yeah. Uh, they've managed to, to, to see the errors of ways and they've connected it. So for the next 24 hours, what's the appetite? And um, look, it's, I don't know about you guys, but the, amount, the demand for tickets out there, absolutely incredible. People that are loose looking for tickets. Yeah. Well, it's obviously they'd love to beat the Germany game in Munich, but well, it's a Hungary game. 
the game against Switzerland, the, the demand is unbelievable. Uh, I mean, honestly, I'm not sure, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's 80, 90,000 uh, Scottish supporters out in Germany in the summer. But and there'll be not one bit yeah. of trouble. No. That's true. From the Scots. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they go sure. there. Listen, you hear when whoever Scotland play, um, whatever country they play, sorry, you, you always hear how highly they, they think of the, the, the Scottish fans. They get there and support, they enjoy themselves, but listen, they behave, and that's the main thing. And I agree with Matt, I think there'll be tens of thousands of Scots out in, out in Germany. What do you think about the friendly with uh, Holland and the, the Netherlands in March? You happy with that? Yeah, Barry? The, I, yeah, I like I like the way Steve Clark goes about his business in terms of the friendlies. And I've had this debate a few times, Paul. I think Mark agrees with me. I would rather play the top nations because um, listen, you might suffer a defeat, but you learn so much when you play against top players and, and top teams. Um, so I think it's a brilliant fl- uh, friendly. The Dutch have got some top class players, um, so I wasn't surprised that he, he pulled that out of the hat. Mark, a good test. Yeah, it is. You know, um, in Amsterdam, that's exactly what you want because you know there's only there's only four games we've seen now in G- the actual game against Germany on uh, June the 14th. So yeah, put your players to the test. Um, why not keep them right on their toes? You know, most of the squad are used to play against that mm-hmm. caliber anyway at a club level. Um, Paul, whether it's down south. The, the boys that are in the Premier League, boys that are in the league, or, or even the boys up here when they're playing um, Champions League, Europa League. So absolutely nothing wrong with it. And Steve Clark's been consistent on that. And it's not often we say it, but credit when credit's due. Credit to the SFA for delivering these these friendlies as well. Steve Clark's clearly made it clear to them that's the calibre of opponent that he wants and the SFA have delivered. It's remarkable how it's turned around under Stevie Clark and the people in charge, Barry, because it's not that many years ago, you know, we were talking about the football being um, at Murrayfield rather than at Hamden, which would have been absolutely, I mean, crazy. It's the people's game, this is the people's city. Yeah, but it's what's happened on the pitch, Paul. I, I'll be honest with you, yeah. listen, I, I'm a Scotland fan, but beforehand... I didn't enjoy watching Scotland. I wasn't too bothered if I was out somewhere and I was desperate to get yeah. back. But now, when I know Scotland are playing, I'm desperate to make sure, well, I, I will make sure that I'm back in time to, to watch it on the TV. What are the chances? The private jet, Barry, could we... Do you think yeah, we'll I be think there? you know a few people that have got one of them. Germany, Scotland, I'm phoning them all. They're ignoring, <laughs> they're ignoring the calls. Germany, Scotland, 14th of June. Scotland, Switzerland, 19th in Cologne. And Scotland, Hungary in Stuttgart. And Mark, quite a few people were on after they listened to you on Monday. You know, a win in that third game could see us through. Even yeah. if, I'm not saying we won't win in the first two games, but maybe even take a point and then get to that one. So I think people yeah. think, oh, look, we're against the holders, the host nation, it's going to be tough, but what are you thinking? I think, first of all, um, if you were given a, a free pick, you probably, I think, 80% of people would have gone for Germany. Mm-hmm. They're in transition, Paul, you know, Nagelsmann's yeah. taken over, let's see, but they're not the force that they were, let's be honest, so, um, and maybe they, they'll, they'll feel the pressure of it being in their own country, opening game, when you look at opening games in, in World Cups and European Championships, it kind of, re- doesn't often go to plan and even the heavy favourites will kind of stutter a year so this is a perfect time to get Germany on the opening night um, in Munich so that's a good one for Scotland and as I said as long as you don't take a spanking it's a lie for you to get into the, the last game but ideally Scotland's got at least three points get into the final game and um, I, I think we'll do it Pop, it'll take us to the final game I don't think we'll be home and host after two games um, but I genuinely feel um, provide we don't lose any of our top players through injury that mm-hmm. the, we'll be into the last 16 to the knockout stages that's key yeah. that's a key thing and listen the, the, the players that we were missing the last double header there I don't care what MD says you're going to miss that that quality and I'm talking about Kieran Tierney Andy Robertson um, Arne Hickey but big Angus Gunn who I think has been excellent since he's come into the Scotland fold yeah. um, so Steve Clark will just be hoping um, that every single player is available and then he's got a big decision to make because there's going to be a a few um, disappointed players well, Darren's on the socials at Go Football Show asking both of you who is not going to make it on the plane but I would turn it around another way I'm not saying don't answer that it's difficult just now um, who could break through is it Harvey Barnes because it's not going to be Anthony Gordon we know that now Liveramento yeah. as well yeah. Yeah, but if Harvey Barnes Harvey Barnes appears to still be alive yeah. 
Mm. Um, option obviously wait and see how he comes through his injury I still think Ben Doak could be one do you come into the field? Yeah. yeah I do yeah. Yeah, I think I'm ben, enough ben Doak. experience by then Just Paul I think I'm, I'm not saying you take passengers I'm not saying you take somebody for the sake of it but I've watched Ben Doak live you don't get a game for Liverpool and I'm not saying he started he doesn't but he, he's a kid remember but you don't get a game for Liverpool you don't have the trust of Jurgen Klopp unless you've got something to offer at that level and what I'm saying is, if we need to go and chase a goal, putting on Ben Dort with 20 minutes to go against tired fullbacks, tired defenders, all day long, have, have we got anybody? Now, Harvey Barnes would be somebody like that as well. He's got more experience. You would give Harvey Barnes the nod ahead of Ben Dort at the moment. But apart from that, do we have anybody who is a natural winger who will get the ball and go and take men on and get the ball into the box? Off the top of my head, I don't think we've got we've got plenty of great attacking midfielders, but I don't think we have a, an out and out wide player who gives you that different option should you want to go down that road. Barry, what do you feel? I would love it to happen, but if I'm being brutally honest, I can't see it. I can't. Um I just think Steve Clark is he's got a group of players um that he trusts and he, he stays with them. Um but listen, it might change because Ben Doak might break into that Liverpool team and start playing on a, a regular basis because listen we've, we're going to have a, an unbelievable player in their hands mm -hmm. in the next year or two there's no doubt about that but I think come the summer it might be a bit too soon but listen I'm all for seeing young players being given the opportunity and as I said I would I'd love to see it happening but I just can't see it Are you worrying particularly about Kieran Tierney given the fact that he's had injuries we need at different him times? Wait, yeah. If you give me the Scotland squad, in my eyes, the most important player is Kieran Tierney. Wow. Yeah, you've said that before. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I just think he brings so much. Um, not just his, his football and ability, just the way he goes about his business. He just looks to me if he just hates losing. I know all players don't enjoy it, but he's, he's got that kind of face you can see it in him. Um, I just think, as an all-round footballer, I think he's, he's quality. And I'm sure Stevie Clark will be... Desperate to, to have him available come that first game against Germany on the 14th of June. Mark, it's going to be cruel. Whoever is doesn't actually yeah. make it. You know, Ryan Jack, a last Barry as well. Yeah, terrific you know, player. Um, it hasn't yeah. let Scotland down. Injuries is the worry. Yeah, so so Ryan Jack's one that you you, 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 would, you put it in that category that you'd be kind of fearing for him. What Ryan Jack has in his favour, um, Paul, is, is 100% Steve Clark really rates him and you know, knows the job that he can do, totally disciplined, a team player, a good pro. He's not going to, you know, another thing I've got to take into account as well, Paul, going away. So these guys are going to be together minimum four weeks, two week build up, two week at the tournament. You need guys that aren't they going to throw their toys at the pram? Aren't they going to try and, you know, yeah. nick out and take four of that? You know, <laughs> guys that are, that are dedicated and committed and professional and good teammates. So you take all that into the equation. Ryan Jack takes all those and I think most of them do but um, so yeah that's he's got one of the central defenders is going to miss out you know if Kieran Tierney's fit now whether that's a, a, a Liam Cooper or a Jack Henry or a Scott McKenna or whoever it's going to be you're going to have a central defender is going to have to to, to miss out um, you're looking at potentially a Greg Taylor missing out Andy Robertson Kieran Tierney um, are fit you then probably get Hicken Patterson as your as your right-sided uh, full-backs and you could maybe see like a Lon Shanklin missing out I, I can't see him taking Shea Adams Lyndon Dykes and Lon Shanklin I can't see the three of them being on the plane I would be surprised because if you do that you're then going to have to sacrifice a Ryan Christie or a Stuart Armstrong um, uh, or someone like that and, and they I don't both think have he would do that. as well so. yeah and again they both you know he knows them inside out but look what it does do is and that's what as much as it'll be horrible to tell two or three players are no going it's great options for Steve Clark and his staff to be sitting down with all these players in front and providing they're all fit Barry it must be it's part of the job isn't it you know you take the glory but it must be tough saying to somebody I'm sorry yeah that'll be the hardest yeah. but that'll be the bit Steve, Stevie Clark's not looking forward to Paul what do you think sorry having a chat with yeah. somebody saying listen thanks but you're not going to be in that plenty of Germany um, but listen that's 
why you're a manager you have to um, deal with these tough decisions and listen Stevie Clark's experienced enough um, to do that but listen it's, it's going to be tough on some players who have been in the last couple of years and in, in the squad um, every single double header not easy if you miss out oh. but it's going to be well, and, and there's a guy yeah. as well uh, Jacob Brown uh, who's in more yeah. squads Kenny McLean scored, scored another for one Luton. Kenny McLean scored a great goal in Oslo really yeah. important goal and, also, and again, season pro ticks all the boxes, won't let you down. He took um, us there in some ways, didn't he? Absolutely, Paul. He, he did. And what a servant he's been to Scotland over the past seven or eight years. And um, Kenny McLean and, and knows the game inside out. So look, I, you know, I, I'm not saying that it's a be on end all in terms of Steve Clark's decision making process, but loyalty will play a part. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm all for that. Guys have been good to you. They've looked after you, and they've been good about the place. Well, that, that, that will help them when it comes to picking the squad and that's one thing I think Steve Clark is he is loyal you, you've seen that with the squads um, yeah. but saying that and being loyal these players have done a job uh, the players that you're mentioning like Kenny McLean scoring important goals Stuart Armstrong doesn't he play but he comes on yeah. and does a job for 15-20 minutes Ryan Christie does play at times but other times he's, he's left out and these sort of players have done um, brilliant jobs um, for Scotland over the piece but not everybody can travel. It's 23 players um, and you take it's 20, 20 outfield players yeah. you take three yeah. goalkeepers. Three keepers. Yeah. Again, the keepers. So Craig so Gordon. Do you go less yeah. like do you go with two wing he plays obviously wing backs Nathan Parson Hickey. Yeah. Agreed. And then you go with the other, the other side you've got obviously Taylor mm. and um, Robertson or do you say right do you know what I'll leave a Taylor out because of Robertson's out Hickey can move that's it, exactly. across yep. and play Kieran Tierney can move into that position mm -hmm. so that's things that he'll be you'll obviously be sitting down with his staff and, and thinking about so he can take more forward players or more midfielders so that's maybe the way that he, he may go down it was such a long time without it Mark wasn't it so many tournaments that oh. we missed out on and yeah we got we got yeah. through uh, via the Nations and that great save that was brilliant yeah. but, uh, but, and I'm not just saying it because yeah. we, we get knocked out in the, 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 the group stages but it just wasn't quite right the Euros because of Covid, COVID. Yeah. you know so that the, the, the Serbia game the penalty shootout and then I mean I know you were down at, at Wembley when you had was the time it? of your yep. life yet but I mean <laughs> uh, for a lot of us we never got to, to, a, to a game because it was still yeah. the kind of Covid thing um, going on but this will be proper Paul you know, this will be uh, proper. I mean, kicking off in, in Munich, it's, it's sensational. And I think, I, I genuinely mean it, it's the best time to get Germany is in the opening game. Yeah. You think so? They'll yes, be, it is. Because the Absolutely. pressure on the yeah, host nation. Yeah, right. yeah. I'm, I'm going to look it up. I'll get my research done yeah. the next time. But you look at opening opening days, and I think when France, for example, went to defend the 1998 World Cup in 2002, they lost yes. the opening game, didn't they? Was it Senegal beat them? Right. Um, yeah. Something like that. So you look at it, it's, it's a time to go and cause... An upset is in the the, the, the the opening. And look at Scotland. We lost to Brazil, but, but what a shift we gave it. It was our own goal that done us yeah. in the end. I, I don't care what you say, how big a players they have got and the teams that they play for. The pressure on Germany, that right. first game, yep. will be intense. Yep. And I think that could work in Scotland's favour. I'm not saying Scotland are going to go and demolish Germany 2 or 3 now, but there'll be a lot of pressure. And then as long as Scotland keep it quiet or keep it at nothing each the fans might be get a bit edgy so you, you, you never know and Germany haven't played a competitive game for over a year I know. so you, took, you put all that into the, the equation you just never know what's the impact of that Barry I can imagine if you're not playing competitive football because you've qualified because you're the host it must put you at a disadvantage or do you come in really fresh no, I would rather play competitive yeah. football. It's similar to when you do a pre-season, Paul, and you play five or six friendlies. And, and generally, when you go into the first game of the season, whether that's Champions League qualifiers, you are a bit rusty. You're no up to speed. Because the, the pre-season pre friendlies, listen, you need them. But there's, there's nothing to play for. So as soon as you go into a competitive game where you've got something, either that's getting three points or making sure you want to go into the next round of a qualification... That's what you need. So, I didn't know that it was a year out. I didn't realise it was as long as that. So, listen, that that's no great either. What do you think? Can't wait to be there, and we'll be in the build-up. We're all looking at each other. Are we going to be there at the game? <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll no doubt find out in the coming weeks and months. Just looking on the telly there, the big match tonight on Sky is Hearts against Rangers. That was some ball from Cantwell, wasn't it? Through to Seema. 
Yeah, and the reason why he played that, but listen, he's got the ability to do it, yeah. but he was further up the pitch, Paul. And Todd Cantwell hurts all position when he's further up the pitch. And that's what I want to see him. Um, I thought in the first half against St Murnay he was dropping too deep and it was clear um, come the second half that Philip Clement had a chat with him and wanted him further up the pitch and when you have him further up the pitch he can go and do his damage and the ball through to Seema was excellent. No, I don't think that is the right thing to say. If he's performing like he performed in the weekend he will play there more regularly. But it all has to do with performances. But... It can be also that he needs to play in moments on the right side because the team needs that if we have injuries and not enough available players there. That's part of football. And it's not something specially for Todd. Tom Lawrence played also another position than he always played. And he did the job for the team. And if everybody does that, then we're stronger. But Todd is ready for that. We had uh, really good talks around that. Yeah, I mentioned that on Monday, I mentioned Claude Arena, but also George Alberts played yeah. wide left mm-hmm. or left back sometimes. Uh, Giovanni, uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhurst mm-hmm. played left back at times. I know he finished at, at Barcelona, mm-hmm. etc. But sometimes when you're running low, whether it's injuries and suspensions, you need to play a, a, a or you get asked by the manager to, to play a different position. I, I had to do it one, I don't know if you remember, the Parma game over there. Is that the Champions League qualifier? Yeah, I think, I think yeah. it was uh, Sergio Perini get sent off and um, I get shouted to go to right back. I was like, oh, here we go. How was but it? Like, oh, nightmare. Yeah. Nightmare. I was playing against the wee boy Artiga. Oh, aye, aye. 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 You tricky. Oh, yeah. Jesus, man. Yeah. But do you know what? <laughs> You're asked to go and do a job. You need to go and do it. Did I do it well? No, I didn't, but I tried. I gave it everything. And that's, I mean, I think back to... A couple of years ago in Europe, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, John lynched him, go and step in and play as a central yes. defender, back three, and did it really, mm-hmm. really well. You know, Bassey, you go and became proper yeah. central defender when he signed, I think, as a left back predominantly. So, ah, you've got to go and do it, and that's where Todd Campbell needs to be more of a team where it can't be all about me, me, me. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have the man you want you to go and do a job, be flexible and do it to the best of your ability uh, for the team. Like the man just cited, it's interesting, made the comparison. I asked, Todd, uh, asked Tom Lawrence to do it. Tom went and did the job. Yeah. Asked Todd Campbell to do it. Mm. Yeah, he's but now we've had a chat of cleared there and the manager's left him in no doubt. I'm the boss. Mm. You want to be here, you want to come along for the ride, you be a team player. Uh, that's 100% right. Listen, ideally you want to play in your, your favourite position. But sometimes it doesn't work out that way and you need to you need to think about the team. Mark, do you think Rangers would get money for him in January if he doesn't? Toe the line or fit in with the way. Could the, we? Yeah, could the Louis Vuitton bag be heading to another venue somewhere else? But that that would be you know up, up to the club and the agent to go and see yeah. what kind of options are out there. Um, sometimes you find it's maybe loan deals in, in January, Paul. But I think the thing for Todd Cantwell is, for me, Dessers, Lammers, it's not going to happen for no. Todd Cantwell. There is a player yeah. in there, but he needs the attitude to go with it and just just we were talking about him on Monday night for his lovely pass for his for his contribution to the game and too often for my liking we've been talking about in the past about a headband or diving or you know arguments with Chris Sutton and I think part of the problem where it should have been stamped on and nipped in the bud in week one but the to an extent Michael Beale indulged that kind of stuff Philippe Clement's not and that's the difference between the two managers as well Barry is going to be there we don't know yet but yeah but I'm I'm been greedy I want to see more because I think there's more in him um, and I think this is a manager that it, it's, um, it could get it out of him if he's not going to get it out of him then I don't think he'll, he'll survive um, but th- there's no doubt he's got ability Paul I've met him personally I met him when we were doing that Christmas advert and I took to him he was a nice guy Yeah, you could see that he had a wee bit about him and I thought you'll do for me but where it really matters is when you cross that white line you need to do it on a, cons- a consistent basis and if you do it on a consistent basis the fans will take to you it's a balance as well isn't it you have to have a bit of character you can't yeah, just be absolutely. no he's got a bit yeah. about him I'll, get, yeah, I'll give yeah, him that yeah. and yeah. I think you've got to have that if you want to play a Rangers or a Celtic have you heard yet from two doors down for the- <laughs> no, no the phone's been a bit quiet <laughs> <laughs> uh, a bit disappointed but listen plenty of time plenty of time listen it's coming up with Christmas people are a bit busy so hopefully 
<laughs> Come January when it quiets down, I may get a, a couple of phone calls. You know the number, 0808 17 17 700. Hello, Barry Ferguson's agent here. <laughs> The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. Design your bespoke solar PV system and meet your energy needs with no upfront costs. Let's go! Looking forward to the games tonight. After last night, Ross County 3, Motherwell 0. Quite a lot of heat now going on Stuart Kettlewell, who did such a good job for so long. It's a limited budget. A lot of people saying Van Veen has been the obvious miss and he wants to come back because of his girlfriend having a baby. Mark, is there any chance Motherwell could come up with the money? I suspect I know the answer, but could they get him back? Uh, they, 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 um, they really need um, Van Veen to be, to be willing to come and, and, and the club to, to be fairly generous in, in what, they're, um, what they're willing to take in terms of a, a percentage of the wages. I can't see it being a permanent uh, thing, Paul. Um, but look, they just need to try and do the best they can until the the window opens, and that means winning on Saturday um, at home to St Johnston. It's there for them. It's a home game, Paul. Why not? They've got, you know they've, they've not got Van Veen, but they started the season well enough without him, so they need to go and crack on again. And I know the focus always going on the manager, and they're the ones that ultimately live or die by results. But the players need to take responsibility and really get a grip with themselves and say, right, come on, we should be and could be doing better and yet they did well against Celtic just the other week Barry it's strange football isn't it they're playing the champions yeah. and they get that point yeah I thought they were very good against Celtic um, and they get a good point and you think at that stage right now Mother, uh, Mother were going to kick on um, but obviously uh, that, that that was just looking at it Paul i never I never seen that coming I thought they were up there I know Derek Adams has had a brilliant start and that's a brilliant win for him mm-hmm. last night again but I just thought my Lord would have been up there and come back down the road with a, with a point and listen all focus now I'd have had them in this morning all focus goes on Saturday they need to make sure they get the three points if they don't get the three points then um, they're in a, a sticky situation but I agree with Mark it's always on the manager and I totally get that everything falls on his shoulders but at the same time the manager can only do so much he picks a team once you cross that white line it's up to you do it do it for yourself mm-hmm. Go and uh, perform and, and make sure you, you give it everything you've got. But, yeah, bad result for him. And I think Saturday is a, a must win for Muddle. Still, uh, there isn't a huge gap at the bottom, as you know. Livingston on 10 points after 14 games. St Johnson on 11 after 14. Aberdeen on 13 after 13 games. So they've got three games in hand, obviously, in playing tonight. Uh, Motherwell on 14 points now, so they're fourth bottom. They're three points now behind Ross County and Kilmarnock on 17 points. And then his top six, Dundee on 18 points. Hibs on 21, St Mirren on 22, Hearts on 23, Rangers on 31 with a game in hand on Celtic and Celtic at the top on 39 points. Mm. Team New Stanley came in. What are you thinking, Mark, oh, there? But, yeah. I mean, Paul, you're saying that... Um in one well on 14 points yep. at the moment but they they, they they potentially could end up second bottom um, yep. you know depending on how results sure. go over the next couple of times so if, if St Johnson get a point tonight at home to St Mirren and one on Saturday they, they go above them if Aberdeen beat Kilmarnock or, or one at the weekend then they're, they're going um, ahead of them so yeah it, it's, a, it's a crucial period um, for Motherwell Oh are you ready for the team news Celtic team is in and oh Starts. It's Hart, Johnson, Alistair Johnson, obviously, Cameron Carter Vickers, Liam Scales, and Greg Taylor. Tomoki Iwata, Barry, he's in from the start. You mentioned him. Uh, so did Mark. McGregor, the captain, and O'Reilly. Mikey Johnson, and Palmer, and O up front. So let's check the bench. Bain, Phillips, Kyogo's on the bench. Turnbull, Holm, Tilio, Bernardo, Forrest, and Ralston. Barry, what yeah, do you make of that? Uh, listen, yeah. before you start, I've got to get. Marky's place. He mentioned it first. Come yeah. on. I know he did a wee dig at you, but you, you don't need to do that. <laughs> did you? I missed it. Mark, well done. You got it right. Well, we'll yeah. see. I didn't, I didn't see the Kyogo one coming. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I did highlight seven and eight games with a goal. Oh, sorry, just one goal, seven and eight games. So, oh, I'll be chanting at the bit, Paul, um, mm-hmm. to, go and, to go and get it and maybe just feel a wee bit more sort of direct, a wee bit more hustle and bustle from all. From might um, you know be the best way to deal with the uh, Hibernian defenders, and if need be, you know what a player they have on the bench. If you need to bring him on, we have yeah. to go. Or as was the case on Sunday at half time, if you need to make a change or two. But yeah, an interesting start in eleven. You've got to freshen yeah. up, Paul. 
That's why you yeah. carry 18, 19 you know, sure. really good players. Yeah. Um, and it's up to those guys to go and show that the manager's right. Well done. Uh, Gregory's on, who gave us his team news earlier, saying, I didn't see that one coming. Here's the Hibs team. Marshall, who played brilliantly, as we all know, at the weekend. Miller, Fish, Levitt, Yuan, Boyle, Newell, Stevenson, Jair, Campbell and Rocky Bashiri. So that's mm. the way they've given us their team just we've now. Look at you, Anne, and Boyle. Yeah. The, 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 you know, they're, they're the, the threat. I really yeah. do like uh, Miller at right back. I yeah. think he's got potential to, to go into bigger and better things. You know, your proper modern day right handed side play, right sided player, gets up and down, great energy, chips in with a goal, threat at set pieces. I really mm. like the look of Miller. Yeah, I like Levitt in the middle of the pitch as well. Yeah. Was he's at Dundee United last yeah. season. Um, Good upbringing, come through the ranks at, at Manchester United, um, can handle the ball. But listen, Johan and, and Boyle, that's the danger men. And if Celtic keep them quiet, then I think it'll be a pretty comfortable night for them. On the bench for the High Bees, Wallacott, Hanlon, the club captain, Venta, who's been playing well, hasn't he? Yeah, the striker, the yeah. centre forward, yeah. Yeah, Jago, Doidge, Harbottle, Molotnikov, Whitaker. And Landers. And if you're just tuning in, the Celtic team O is in. Kyogo starts on the bench, and uh, they've got uh, Tomoki Awata is in as well. Turnbull on the bench. So real chance. And Palma is fit, which you you took from the manager what he said the other day. Right, Aberdeen, massive game for them. We were talking about the other end of the table. Huge time for Barry Robson, and also on the road. Derek McInnes wants to pick up points. So here's the Aberdeen team, first of all. Roos, who played really well at the weekend. Devlin, Shinny the captain. Jensen, Garten Mann, McGrath, Mayofsky that everyone's talking about. Is he on the way to Celtic in January? Clarkson, Duke, Hayes and McDonald. They don't give you the actual how they shape up, but that's uh, the team. I'll give you the Killy team. They're coming in thick and fast. Any early thoughts there in Aberdeen or... Just let me... Yeah, good. Miofsky, yeah. Duke's in there. Angus McDonald got that great goal against Helsinki um, last week. So, yeah, a lot of the, obviously the experience of Johnny Hayes. So, yeah, good Aberdeen team. Here's the Kelly team. Dennis in goal, of course. Mayo, Finlay, Dees, Daba, Armstrong, Watson, Donnelly, Lyons, Watkins and the skipper. He's fit. Vassell. Barry, so that's the... And, and Mark, the... Good. Yeah. One thing I've noticed about Commander this season, yeah. and, and I take it was it was deliberate in terms of Derek with his recruitment. A lot of good pace in the Commander team. Mm. A lot of areas of the pitch have got really good uh, pace, and they've got the strength. I really like the look of uh, Watson. Really good young player signed a con- new contract there, which is good news for Commander. Lines has been really good. Armstrong's been you know turning it on now as well. And I think Vassell played a massive part in keeping Commander up in the second half of last season they brought him in January Derek's made him the club captain team captain so yeah they've got a lot, a lot of good players I think that'll be a cracking game at Pitoja and can you imagine how cool it's going to be Pitoja well, tonight I know. absolutely bolted but, yeah. when you look at that command look team they're a physical unit mm. uh, Derek yeah. likes strong big mm. teams um, and certainly with the two up top I think that's a good double act Watkins and, and Vassell mm. they'll yeah. cause some teams um, a few problems no doubt about it but that was a big blow wasn't it at the weekend to lose at home yeah. to Hearts he must have targeted that as at least a point yeah but then yeah. saying that Hearts are in a good place yeah, sure. well, well look it was a, a bad goal bad mistake for the goalkeeper um, but listen I, I'm sure they want to get back to winning ways and I, I'll, I'll be honest with you I think I think Commander will go up there and and come back down the road by a point right okay and I fancy them okay we'll circle back round and get those um once we do the low block, <laughs> circle round, is that one? No, it's not one of these phrases. Right, what about the Battle of the Saints, St. Johnson against St. Mirren? So, St. Johnson, Mitov, Brown, McGowan, Gordon, the captain, Robinson, Gallagher, Phillips, Smith, Kucharevi, Kerry, and Yesemi, who scored, of course, um, quite recently, didn't he? He yeah. uh, scored the opening goal against yeah. Celtic at the weekend. Up against St. Mirren, who've had a, a torrid November, early December after a brilliant run, but still fourth top of the table. So Zach Hemming in goals. Fraser, Gogic, Dunn, Flynn, O'Hara the captain, Boyd Munz, Tanzer, Jameson, Kilty and Ayunga. Good experience in that St. Martin team as well. You look, you, know, you look at Charles Dunn and Marcus Fraser and you know all those guys, plenty of experience. Greg Kilty I think had a really good season for them. Mark O'Hara, uh, you always know what you're going to get uh, from him. He drives the team on. 
um, from the middle of the park so I think that'll be a cracking uh, game actually I think it'll be quite mm-hmm. uh, open St Johnston will feel a bit for them to go and try and win it St Myrna will, will, will use their experience uh, and confidence yeah it'll be a really good game cold. on the bench for the Paisley Saints they've got Ermanski of course Bolton Small Bacchus Olisanya McMiniman Namene Grieve and Mandron so they've got some experience on there Barry haven't they on the bench if they need to bring them on yeah they, yeah. they have they've got some good players um, I, I thought they'd done pretty well the first half at Ibrox um, and Rangers get the goal at a perfect time just before half time but I know Mark was mentioning a few players do you know who stands out he's playing at the centre he's middly a, a back three is Gogic yeah. you know what I mean yeah. he started at Hamilton and obviously went to Hibs he, he was really good yeah. Really good, um, but yeah, I, I think it'll be a tough one for St. Mungan mm. up there tonight. Golly, what age is he? 105 now. He's been, <laughs> he's been, he's been a great pro, yeah. He? He's been yeah. I remember him at Hamilton and, and, he, and he got his move yeah. uh, to Hibs and to, uh, to St. Mungan. But he's a kind of player I like. I think that every team should have at least one Alec Godic in their team, a total warrior, uh, never say die. Uh, attitude, you know, technically, not the most gifted, but he knows his way about you the pitch, he knows his you job. Know what you're going to get and he, he does he want to be fancy. Right. It's like the old saying, see you, son, just get the ball and give it to the better players. And that's what he'll do. Right. You know, he'll just get attack on and move it on. Does it simple and does a real good job. Celtic fans in the car wondering what's what kind of Celtic are going to turn up tonight. I mean, they're eight points clear. You could say get this in perspective, but they know they've not been firing in all cylinders. Yeah, but they've had a rocket. Yeah, they've had a rocket for Brendan Rodgers on Saturday, eh, Sunday rather, and they've responded at half time. The captain's taken the manager's words onto the pitch and driven the team on. I think Celtic will win tonight, Paul, and I think they'll put in a bit of a performance. He's freshened it up, okay. brought in a couple of players um, just to let people know that. It's actually more than words. I'm actually going to put things into action. They changed the team at half-time on Sunday. So I think which will be a really entertaining team because Hibs will have a go. Uh, it'll be open, it'll be expansive. I think Celtic will win. Oh, I was going to get your prediction shortly. Here's what the manager said about being so angry at the weekend. The problem is if you if you speak to them at half-time and then you don't get the reaction. So uh, that's when it's the, the, the big problem. Now, the, the, these guys have been brilliant. And uh, and every now and then, you, you just need a reminder that, that Celtic's a club where you don't go through the motions, either as a staff member or a, a player. And, uh, and we went through the motions in the, in the first half. So uh, for whatever reason that was, we needed it to be better. And second half, we were much more intense much more aggressive in our game with and without the ball and, and you've seen the, the quality of our goals and the quality of our play so uh, and that's it so we move on to the next game The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy for your free energy home survey and bespoke quote call 0800 233 5788 Let's go Barry Ferguson Paul Cooney and Mark Guidi looking forward to the games tonight Barry will have the Rangers team and the Hearts team shortly because it's an eight o'clock kickoff, so it's just mm-hmm. a few minutes behind the others. But you don't expect many changes, maybe just one. No, I don't expect many changes. I think, yep, I just think it will be centre forward position. Danilo will come in for Dessers. I have no issues. Mark had mentioned about McCausland. I, 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 listen, the young man for me since he's he's come into the Rangers fold has has been excellent. He's a real um, energetic uh, player. Really impressed by him, so I think um, I, well, I'd certainly start him tonight, and I don't think the manager will have any hesitations in in starting him. But we'll see in five minutes. Yep, we will. Mark, just before the break, we heard from Brendan Rodgers. That was um, we haven't heard him like that, and we haven't seen him. We all saw it in the telly. We yeah. haven't seen him as angry. The question will be: Will the will that have an impact tonight? Um, yeah, I mean, I think Barry will probably be able, be able to get the, the Rangers team any time he like uh, mm-hmm. now, Paul. But yeah, and then obviously the message there was <laughs> players and staff, we didn't hit the heights of standards that we should yeah. have been. So it was a message to everyone, not just the, the 11 players mm-hmm. who started. For sure. You've got the Rangers lineup there, I take it, from just looking. In fact, here we are. Yeah, Here's the Rangers lineup. You've got it. Butland, Tavernier, Goldson, oh. Balligan, and Yilmaz is in. Lundstrom and Lawrence, Cantwell, McCausland, Sima and Danilo so Barry so Yilmaz yeah, is Barry in yeah. is not even on the bench yeah. so that must well. be an injury mm-hmm. um, and I would imagine if he was fit he would have he would have started the game so yep two changes um, Ridvan in for Barisic and Danilo and for Dessers as you expected on the bench McCrory Suter Dessers just mentioned and Lammers Sifuentes Matondo 
Sterling, Roof and Davies. So it's a strong Rangers lineup up against Hearts. I think the Hearts team has just dropped. It has. Here's how they line up as it drops. And I'll give you in fact you got it there. Here we are. Clark is in goals on the bench is Craig Gordon. I was gonna ask you about that. Craig Gordon is back on the bench. So Clark, they've got Kent, Kingsley, Beningame and Grant, Winnehoff, Shankland, Atkinson, Royals, <coughs> Cochrane, and Tagawa. And on the bench for Hearts. Um, well, first of all, what about Craig Gordon, Barry? It's uh it's brilliant good news. Yeah. Brilliant news, brilliant news, no just for the Hearts fans, um, the Hearts manager, and I, I would suppose the the playing squad as well. I think for Scotland, um, all he needs now is just to get games under his belt. And we, we mentioned this a few weeks ago. We were talking about him if he starts to play games of football, then I think he's a racing cert to go to Germany. He's on the benchmark, as you know, alongside uh, Craig Halkett, Haring, Oda, Forrest, Mackay, Sibic, Denham, and Vargas. Yeah. First of all, what do you make of the Rangers lineup then? So Barisic, he's not on the bench, so you'd assume an injury. Yeah. Yilmaz? Yeah, yeah, Yilmaz, so he's a natural uh, replacement um, for uh, for him. Apart from that, Lawrence is in the team, Cantwell's in the team, I see that Danilo that we all thought um, would come in and start, McCausland. So, yeah, you look at it, <clears throat> Butland, so there's, there's three of the summer signings starting uh, the game that Michael Beal signed in for them. Um on the bench so I think it's a strong starting lineup, and I think it's a good bench as well I think there's good options for there for Rangers should they require it and also for Hearts I think Hearts have got a strong bench as well good. I, I, yeah. I really like Alan Forrest actually James's brother yeah. I think you know I, I liked him at Livy I thought it was a really should signing by Hearts by Robbie Nielsen to go and get him and uh, you know I think he shows a, a high level of consistency for a wide player yeah. probably wide I know he can come inside but yeah, and if he gets uh, minutes on the pitch tonight, he'll cause Rangers problems. Of course, no Lowry can't play against his uh, parent club. Barry, what do you feel about the Hearts lineup tonight? Yeah, it's a, a strong lineup, and you, you mentioned Craig Gordon, but also a big boost for Hearts is Halkett. Yeah, he's been a he's been a big miss for them. Yeah. He's a, he's a club captain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's going to as I said, Paul, it's going to be a tough game tonight. There's no doubt about it. Hearts have got confidence because of the last three wins. Um, and, it, and it's a good test going for the Rangers side of things as for Ridvan um, he's going into a, a red hot atmosphere it's going to be a physical game if you look look at Ridvan he's not the most physical biggest um, so it'll be a test for him but hopefully he comes through it with, with flying colours but Rangers will know what to expect I'd be shocked if they, they don't I'm, I'm sure the manager he looks in depth at, at teams the way they play and the coaching staff and they have to be ready uh, ready for this game because they need to come back down the road with, with three points. No, for sure. And uh, it's a good team with also a coach with a history with Rangers. So he's also extra motivated in that way. So we, we know we know it's, uh, it's a big challenge to go there. We know. That was him speaking after the AGM yesterday. He was also asked about January comings and goings. But of course, reshaping it in January is much more difficult than reshaping it in the summer. That's also reality in football for every club. So I'm realistic about that. Yeah, that's the idea to do some things, but it will not be a lot of things. It needs to be the right things. A few people on the socials, Barry, asking, what did you make of the AGM overall yesterday? The, the, the thing that I think most fans, or, or I believe most fans want to hear is if there's going to be um, money available for the manager. And it was clear. The, the chairman had said that there will be, um, if he wants to make signings, that um, there will be funds there for the manager to go and do that. So I think that's all fans want to hear, that they're, they're going to get the... Is the, the money going to stop? Because there was a lot spent in the summer, but it seems to me if there's going to be some available to go and strengthen the squad in areas where Philip Clement thinks that they need it. Barry, Mark, as Barry says, it's going to be a crucial few weeks if they lift the League Cup, which you would expect, does that give them even more confidence, Philippe Clement? Give them the money, give them the funds to try and challenge yeah. Celtic at the top? Yeah, um, but then he's got to go and do his part by, by staying in touch in the league and, and not losing at Celtic part in December the 30th. So if he's within touching distance, you know, if if they're, you know both played, you know, whatever it is, 18 games or whatever by, by the, the break, um, and the margin is within five points, 
possibility could be that Rangers go might go to Parkhead and if they win they go ahead of Celtic we never know what's going to unfold in the next couple of weeks but what Philippe Clermont doesn't want is that Rangers lose that day and the gap all of a sudden is 9 or 10 points going into the second half of the season that, that kind of kills it uh, for Rangers so we'll see how, how it unfolds but on, on the AGM in terms of funds and different things of course the board will do the best they can to back the manager but I think to get things done that he might want to do they're going to have to generate from within that means moving players on whether it's in loan apparently but I like the chairman John Bennett's messaging yesterday Paul and when the, the accounts came out uh, four or five weeks ago um, in terms of uh, improvements around the football club we need to be better at player trading um, and he's saying yesterday as well his message was you know we've got a 10 million hole we can't lose that every year so he's um, he will back the manager as best he can but he will not be reckless can't afford to do that so he'll do it but he'll do it in a, in a sensible manager and that, that's the way you've got to do it and I think Philippe Clermont gets that as well I think these guys who are like when they've been in management like, like they're head coaches they get that that you you know you can't as he said he's not got a magic wand John Bennett's not got a magic wand as a chairman as well so they need to work together as, as best yeah, they can and they're, they're not just they're building within the, the the club as well in terms of directory performance yep. brought him in from Brighton and obviously a new director of recruitment it's no, he's not called a sporting director yep. he's director of recruitment so they're going down a dif- different path because they've obviously changed their scouting network now so um, it, it, listen it doesn't happen overnight but at least they're trying to make the changes they are making the changes and I think they really trust this manager What's your scoreline tonight Barry in Tynecastle? I'm going to go Hearts 1 Rangers 2 Mark? Hearts 2 Rangers 3 Celtic against Hibs what do you think, Mark? A 3-1 Celtic. Barry, what do you reckon? I'm trying to think what I say is on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can change it. I, I know I never <laughs> said 3-1 Celtic Monday. Hey, I, 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 I think I did, Jay. I think I said 2-0. Yeah, I was 3-1. I'll right. go, yeah. 3-1, 3-1 as well Celtic. for Celtic. Uh, obviously not involved tonight, but this is what the manager was saying about two key players. Liel and, and Dyson are both on the, the pitch now, which is great news for us. Dyson's probably a little bit ahead of Liel, but, uh, but I'm expecting at some point this month uh, that uh, they'll be uh, they'll be available and a Hibs side up against and he's been talking about the way they play they obviously want to build a game from behind uh, listen there's no right or wrong way to, to play the game but of course I always admire teams that that, that are coached to, to to play because it's much more difficult uh, in order to do that so and you can see what Nick has, has done uh, since he's come and he wants the, the team to play through the <laughs> Through the thirds of the pitch, you want them to be creative, and they've got some very good players. The other games, Barry. First of all, what about St Mirren up at St Johnson? What do you think tonight? Yeah. I say it's a draw on Monday. I think yeah. I, I'm going to go St Johnson. Right, because yeah, yeah, I'm going to go St Johnson. Momentum there. What do you think, Mark? Hey, Your old club? No, no, no. Right, no, no. Stephen Robinson wouldn't be unhappy with that, would he? Because I, I think both yeah. managers might think yeah. that's no yeah. too bad, but I think. Craig Levine and St Johns will be targeting four points out of six between tonight and, and mm. Saturday. And what about Aberdeen Kilmarnock? I can tell you in the weather word, I spoke with Rob earlier on, Rob McLean, he said it's Baltic and Ballater. So, uh, uh, who's going to win tonight? Uh, I'm going to go Kilmarnock 2-1. Barry, what do you reckon? I'm going to go one each. One each, yeah. Kilmarnock would love a 2-1 win up there, and my goodness stating the obvious. So, final word from the two managers we heard from Brendan Rodgers there, looking forward to the game. And do you think the Thunder will be back tonight at Celtic Park? It's been a bit of a disconnect, you know, Green Brigade and all the rest. Yeah, again, you know, it's, they need to bounce off each other, the fans, and with no uh, Green Brigade there to, to kind of sort of trigger um, an acceptable atmosphere, um, then, yeah, it's up to the players to maybe get the fans going. But pff, a midweek Celtic Park, Really, really cold. Paul, probably low 50,000s, which is still a fantastic uh, turnout. And Barry, big night for Iwata, who's in, and for O. Yeah, an opportunity to go and um, show what they, they can do. Um, o, o brings a, a different dimension. He's more physical than Kyogo. Um, and Iwata, I think, what we mentioned earlier on in the, the show, I think that will free Callum McGregor to, to get up and support the forward players. He did for uh, Rangers tonight. McCausland's back in. Tom Lawrence as well. Somebody I know you really like. And he's getting a run now. Yeah, just needs games. Yeah. There's no doubting he's a quality uh, footballer. 
Um, and young McCausland, uh, it just shows you the trust that the manager's got in him. Um, the young man's come in, he, he's been a breath of fresh air, and hopefully he can continue that tonight. Barry, thanks so much. We'll hear you again on Friday night. Cheers. Mark. Monday, you'll be here. Yep, see you Monday. Have a Thanks nice weekend, so everybody. Enjoy the games tonight. Tomorrow at five, Peter Grant will be here along with Stephen McGinn. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. For your free energy home survey and a bespoke quote, call 0800 233 5788. Let's go. Global Eco Energy sell and install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers. With access to a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, air source heat pumps, and eco garden makeovers, we offer a bespoke service tailored to your exact needs. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk.